as usual with any kind of school setting slice of life shonen show right we go into a field trip to kyoto and we spent one day there basically beat down a bunch of delinquents got to know more about kanzaki wonder if we're gonna have the second day at kyoto if we're just basically done with that let's begin today's reaction <laughs> Oh, he's drawn himself. Philippines mentioned, oh my god. Yeah, his face. Right. I can't, I can't just go to those places and drop that shit. That's impossible. What are you talking about? Karasuma. Karasuma hiring a hitman for Koro sensei. Mm. Red Eye Assassin Sniper. Okay, so we have the special Koro Sensei, anti Koro Sensei bullet shit here. Alright, part two of the trip, let's go. I love how these gloves. It only makes sense because he has two finger appendages per like tentacle. The other three just flaps around. Totally a human guy. Bald, bald, bald. This is it. Where's the sniper at? All part of the plan. Set up. But a snipe ain't gonna do shit. Like, it doesn't matter if you have a silencer on it either, right? Because, like, the bullet, Koro-sensei will simply just react to it. It's too slow. Even if he's, like, quote-unquote distracted, won't we kind of, like, hear or sense the bullet whizzing through the air? Easy. Yeah. Tiny bone. Not a bullet. Yeah. Damn. He spun that shit too. He spun the mochi just to match that. Yeah, he's a real deal, man. Not gonna be easy. Like, there's no way the sniper gets away with it. Because, like, I don't think a snipe... A snipe, to me, is basically the same as, like, a direct, like, assault. Nothing you do directly will ever matter. You have to make him flustered. You have to make him, like, emotionally, like, tilted. Then, when his senses are off, you have to, like, set some sort of, like, additional trap. <laughs> Samurai pride. <laughs> This is our Oshinoko, guys. 2.5D play. Okay, I shall assist. Yeah, just improv, bro. Just improv, bro. Just go with the flow. His reputation from down the dog shit water at this rate. なんだそりゃ。ケイオミズ寺。もう手は2年坂でお土産探し。前もしか興味ねえだろ。よし。ここなら where did that show up from? Is that, is, that, is that from the paper? The blotch paper? That's not specific to what koro was doing? Because Koro-sensei is so slimy. 
I don't know. His like octopus like tendencies. The mucus picked up from the blotch paper blocked the bullets. <laughs> Octopus monster. Yeah, Karasuma really didn't brief him down, huh? Oh yeah, by the way, he can move at Mach 20. <laughs> yeah. The high schoolers. This legendary sniper is about to retire and get out of the business because of Koto Sensei. He's done, bro. <laughs> Yo, ignore the students. Koto Sensei needs to uplift this guy. Like, Koto Sensei needs to straight up just have like a man to man like talk with them and like convince it to continue on. That's what the episode's gonna be. Red Eye. Koro Sensei. Oh, it's you. Thanks. What do you mean it's you? Hello? Yeah. You're gonna play nice, right? You don't need to be mean to him. Now we're getting baited. Are they getting hot pot together? <laughs> They're literally getting hot pot together, bro. Nice. I hope Koro Sensei can convince him not to like retire or something. Nah. That ain't Koro Sensei, man. He doesn't just kill. It must be very hot. His mouth can't handle the heat. Interesting. Thank you. Yeah. I'll to kill him. They were working so hard to figure out all the important things about Kyoto just to assassinate Koro Sensei. Wow, how wholesome. It's actually crazy how like this theme of assassinations can like unite the kids into like a common goal. Yep. It sure will, Sensei. Wholesome assassinations, guys. Yeah, again, it feels like he's being a teacher for him today. Like, he's one of the students right now. And there's that moon he blew up. Not red. All the other colors, too. A new leaf has turned for him. <laughs> what color will paint my scope tomorrow? So funny. Because like, you know, he got his uh, like name Red Eye because he kills always through the scope, blood is shown. But now he's thinking about giving up because he failed because of Koro Sensei. Koro Sensei has uplifted him after that little hot pop man to man talk. And now he's like motivated to try out different shit. <laughs> what color will paint my scope tomorrow? Hopefully no one's fucking dead from it. Kanzaki. Kanzaki? Ah, she gaming. She a sweaty gamer. Yeah, who cares? Just do you. <laughs> I wonder what she and Kana talked about when they were kidnapped. Are we gonna die? Is anyone gonna save us? Please! Yeah, nothing like, you know, closing bonds together after like sharing a traumatic experience of almost getting fucking like, you know, kidnapped and who knows what's gonna happen afterwards. Oh, can't wait. Um, amazing, um, amazing friendship. Oh, ping pong. なんかですね。これ多分アメイジングフタンはかなり。オーベア2部屋だし。Wait。Shouldn't or like an inn? I feel like this is the perfect opportunity for like some kind of like hot spring episode and the guys to like peek into the girls and girls get mad and you know it's the fucking classic anime trope all over again. Oh. What's going on? They peek in. 
The girls are peeping. Wait, wait, wait. Who, who are you peeping at? What? Who are you looking at? Yeah, what? It's, it's usually the guy's job to peep, you know, in the hospital episode, but the, the girls are peeping? For who? Karma? Karasuma? He's playing ping pong. Koro sensei? They peeping on Koro sensei? Yeah. He's naked. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that, that's what I'm thinking, right? I just think that he just looks like this underneath. It's just that. That's exactly what I thought of. But maybe he has something else going on. <laughs> I don't know about that. Um, an interesting thing that did happen one time is how, like, during the poison stuff, right? His face would change colors, but only his face. Nothing else of his body, right? It's the same skin tone remain, but his face would change. I'm not sure if that's important. <laughs> Peeping on a t-shirt. <laughs> he likes bubbles. Oh. Your own bubbles? Very convenient. <laughs> what kind of fucking show is this? Where a girl's trying to look, you know, get the fucking... I want to see you naked. I mean, it is a mystery. We want to see what's down there. <laughs> what the... Hey, that's not fair. We can't see anything. It's all fucking jelloed. <laughs> Bye. He actually looked like an octopus for the first time, though. Because I just imagine octopus did just them just being pink and tentacles like that. <laughs> bye bye. Kanzaki, most popular girl. Kanzaki, great personality, super cute looks. The girl below, bro. The girl eh? below. Yada. Ponytail stacked where it counts. That's it. She got fat honkers and she has a ponytail. Kurahashi, calming, strikes charming poses, small cheers you up. Kayano, right? Kayano is the girl that's always with uh, Nagisa. Kataoka, one vote. Dependable, straight bangs. Okay. Mystery. Which one's Okuda again? Oh, the poison girl, okay. I see, I see. I wonder if the girls have the same chart. Who would be like the top guys there? Probably Karma, Nagisa, and the blonde kid. That, uh, I forget. I don't think Okajima would even make it. I feel like Okajima is supposed to be just like a, just, just butt of the joke every time. Okajima always is suffering during the episode where we're trying to make it to the school, right? I, I bet he's like dead last. Oh, Bye. <laughs> he took notes and left. Loves gossip. What does the guys like? Guys like the ponytail and stacked where it counts, I guess. Nice pick. Very good pick. Who doesn't like Karasuma Sensei? Right? He's so fucking cool. I'm surprised no one mentioned Bitch Sensei over with the boys. You know? Nagisa. Karma. Yeah, Maihara, the blonde guy, right? I'm not sure who Isoga is, but Maihara. Playboy. Oh, he's class press. Karma goaded. Bad boy. I thought that like... Uh, oh, he's not that scary though. 
she and Karma. Maybe that's going to be the actual thing. I don't know. I thought girls kind of like the bad boys, right? There's like a straight edge to him. He's not boring and he's kind of like a wild boy. <laughs> she just has a six pack of beer ready to go. You wanna drink beer too? You wanna hear about that? <laughs> They're more useful than your fucking useless teachings, what? Damn. Alright, she's gonna gossip about how that one time she fucking got a train run on her. Just, a, just like a tensum, bro. All to assassinate. Amazing story, speech sensei. She's 20? She's just 20? Yeah, I thought she'd be way older. You. Women have a shorter shelf life. Ooh, I feel like... I don't know. It's... Some things are just the brutal nature of life, and maybe it's better for people to be, like, aware of that fact, but not let them to be beholden by that. Polish your femininity with all your might. Whore yourselves out while you have this, like, short shelf life. I think that when I think about girls and guys... Um, guys have it rough in the early game. They do. Like, think about you as, like, a kid in high school. And you're trying to, like, get with a girl that's the same age. But you know that girl is, like, with another dude that's way older. Right? And that's gonna be a common theme as you grow up, right? Let's say you're, like, fresh out of high school. You're, like, 20 years old. Do you think that other 20-year-old girls are gonna go for you? What the fuck do you have? You're, you're, you're probably a broke college kid, right? You have nothing to offer. These girls... Are, are basically getting sugar daddies and a bunch of dudes is way older who already have a stable job, money, and everything they can offer, right? So in that sense, girls really, like, scale hard in the early game. They have way more opportunities for what they have. And guys kind of just, you just get fucked because <laughs> you get outcompeted by a bunch of older dudes that can offer these things to provide, like, value for the girls in terms of livelihood. But as you get older as guys, it's better Right? Like, the older you get, you don't really get discriminated against. The, the shitty things about girls is that, like, dudes will say some weird shit of, like, Hey, come on, man, you're getting older, your eggs are drying up. Like, what the fuck? It's so creepy. But the shorter shelf, like, there is some definitely some truth to it where, you know, some dudes only want, like, attractive young girls. Like, you know, Leonardo DiCaprio, he drops a girl as soon as she's, like, what, 25, 26 or something, right? So, it's just the unfair, just, un, just uncomfortable truth of life where girls definitely have like better opportunities when they're younger in terms of like I don't know a bunch of older dudes wanting to provide value without them having anything quote unquote earned due to their beauty and for guys it sucks that like you don't get anything when you're young and you're just fucked because the competition is too hard but later on you get older and then you basically you become that dude that's fucking beating other young kids I don't know that's just the fucking world we're living in man Guys are just late. Just they, they scale very well into the late game. Girls, early game, they pop off. <laughs> okay, this is gonna be some spicy story. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right, give me the spicy drama. <laughs> Why are you here? When, when did you show up? When you were 17. When you were 17, what? 17? Hmm. Do octopus have genders? Wait. Does octopus have gender? Octopus has individuals of both sex. Okay, so there is a male and a female. I, I don't know. For some reason, I thought, like, octopus, they were just male and girl. Just They just, I don't know, do their own thing by themselves. It's, what is it called? Like, 
asexual or something. I don't know. Mm, probably that one girl from the lab that told him to go teach this class. I don't know how the hell that works. Karasuma just chilling. Karasuma, go out and have some fun, bro. Do you have one? Really? Cap. You lied to me. Yo, that's a huge lore drop. That's insane. Like, holy shit. This is probably the most important line of the episode, right? Like, basically, this entire episode doesn't fucking matter except this one line. <laughs> Up until here, it's just slice of life, just having fun, sure. But, like, this is plot. So, what did Principal say before? Principal said, like, how you sought to be the savior, but now you have to act the villain. And now this is like, you used to have two hands and two feet. So, he wasn't a lab-made octopus monster. He was a human that intentionally took upon, like, research on himself and became this thing. For what, though? Why? Why? No clue. A human decided to become, un underwent this experimentation because he wanted to be a hero. Maybe that research lab, whatever they're doing, it was like the promise. Like, Sensei had the heart of, like, I want to be a champion of justice. I want to be a hero. That's what the principal said. You sought to be a hero. Took that experimentation, turned into some sort of octopus dude. Is it a failed experimentation? I'm not sure. If you think about how Sensei is so fast, right? I'm sure this experiment was like, we're going to make the ultimate soldier that can move at Mach 20 and have a higher superior intellect. You're basically going to be like a super soldier, right? But I don't know if it failed or not. But slowly but surely, the pieces are kind of coming together, right? Looking like he wanted to be some sort of superhero. Uh, the experimentation was supposed to give you these superpowers. He did get it, but ended up being a villain instead. And... Another interesting thing is like the ending sequence in that quote unquote flashback where like the researcher, the girl researcher and like Koro sensei, something's going on there, right? The lab is all fucked up. Something bad happened. Is that Koro sensei's fault? I don't really know. How does that relate to this classroom and teaching them? I got no fucking clue. <laughs> Number of appendages? Okay. But that was a crazy lore drop. Yep. Two nights. Wow. We're like, what, seven, eight episodes in and the kids are already like, I don't want this to end. We're having so much fun. No. This is a great soundtrack, man. Very emotional piano soundtrack. Oh, brother. Back to that shitty school. Okay, post credit scene. It's, it's the government, it's the government. It's just like, damn. <laughs> it's just so ominous. These fucking super important, like, under... That's not the underground rule. It's like, the, you know, it's a super important decision makers of the government, right? Karasuma was like an agent and no one can see their faces. It's all fucking clouded, right? I mean, didn't we see this in like episode zero? I, I think I remember episode zero, something like this also happened. <laughs> <laughs> Whoever mentioned that there, he just, just, just fucking nuked the school, bro. Just leveled the school with the fucking missile. Well, Koro Sensei would prevent the missiles from dropping, right? He would figure out a way, but damn, bro. He just fucked them kids. Fuck them all. And like a regular explosion probably isn't enough to kill Koro Sensei. Maybe they have like a special missile variant. Yep. He could. <laughs> 
He put the fragments back together of the missile, even put a fucking rain, like a ribbon on it. Here it is. Hey, new students are going to be joining. Two special assassins are coming in. Okay. Girl and boy, probably. Okay. They're superhumans by science. This is some fucking Beyblade shit, bro. We go, okay, this, we, got some, we got some kids juiced up with fucking steroids ready to fucking just assassinate. One of them has kinks to work out. The other is ready to go. Mista Karasuma. All right, two new characters coming in, guys. Nah, that's it, man. All right. That is the conclusion of the Kyoto arc, and it was relatively short, but the first, you know, um, quote-unquote arc where it spans across multiple episodes, which I love to see as they learn how to, you know, build upon what's already happened and create more longer stories. So this episode was funny because we had a hired hitman, but I don't think he was really given a brief down of how fast Koro-sensei moves to the point this dude's like, yep, I'm gonna retire. But Koro-sensei is such a good guy that he's literally doing the same thing he would to this guy as it was to his students, right? He's just like uplifting him. He's like, don't worry about it, man. It teaches him like a hard, like a very important lesson in life. And now he's ready to move forward. All this stuff with Kanzaki, like Kanzaki's character, like I guess is already quote unquote done. I'm not gonna expect, you know, the author to spend like fucking three separate episodes to, for one specific character. Maybe for someone like Nagisa, right? Maybe they'll do something like that as because like he seems very important. There's some underlying issues that's never been resolved yet. But Kanzaki stuff is like personality disorder, not understanding who she is, always being forced to be someone who she's not. Now she's accepting herself and moving forward. And then aside from just like fan service stuff here, the most important line, Koro Sensei, Playboy, two hands and two feet, implying he was a human. He was a human, and based on what the principal's dialogue was. He was a human that wanted to be a champion of justice, a hero. And then maybe the world government was like, all right, there's this new experiment. And this is going to make you turn into a Superman. Uh, are you going to do it? Okay, I'll do it. He did it. Something bad happened. And now he has to play the villain part. It's almost as if, I don't know, maybe these fucking old boomers, bro. Like These dudes are the ones that came up with the fucking research shit. And now it's quote unquote failed or gotten out of control. And now they're trying to cover up their own mistake. Maybe that's an angle they're going with the story, but... They're, they're, they're sprinkling in just a little bit more plot for us to really theorize about. We got two new characters coming in. One has some stuff to work out. The other is ready to go. Hopefully, they're going to be just as exciting as Karma. That's it from me. If you're still here, and if you enjoyed this reaction, please like the video. Check out the other playlist for more content. And until next time, take care.